Um, so hey everyone, my name is Corey, I lead a data team at Uber, and in the next five minutes I'm going to tell you about our new open data platform called Uber Movement. So if you take anything away from this talk, this is where you get it. I'll show this to you like ten more times, so come write down later. Um, so I'll go through a bit of background, um, what it is, what it isn't, how to use it, and hopefully some ideas to get you started. There's the thing again. Okay. So, this is a city. It's really hard to get facts about a city. Facts are hard to get these days. So we realized that every time someone takes an Uber trip, that's an observation about that city's streets at that point in time. And it's actually dozens of observations every minute across space. Um, so you can measure how long it takes to get from one part of the city to another. So a quick sidebar, does anyone know what an NPO is? No city planners? Hey, there's a couple. Sweet. Um, so it's a metropolitan planning organization, and they were introduced by the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1962, which required the formulation of these for every urban area with over 50,000 people. So they're required to work on transportation demand models, and to do that you need this input of how long it takes to get from place to place. But typically this is what they have to work with. Um, they, it's sparse data, costs $50,000 a year, and it's usually like five years old. Or you can pay someone to sit on, at an intersection and count how many cars go by, which is the highest paid job in my main hometown back in the day. Um, so we thought we can do that and hopefully make it public, open, and hopefully easy to use. So let's go through what it is, what it isn't, and how to use it. So first, what it is. It's a public website that shows you travel times by hour over time. Um, so this is a quick GIF of the early version of it. So we aggregate usually first at the MPO aggregation. They use traffic analysis zones, or TAZs, but we're trying to also launch with census tracts in the US. So travel times by hour, groups of hours. You can make custom groups um, over time. Right now it's just 2016, but we'll have more in there later. So what it isn't, it's not real time, and it's not about us. Sorry. So how do you use it? You go to movement.uber.com again and sign up for our whitelist. So we'll be launching the site to be fully public in the coming weeks, but right now it's just an email only whitelist. And here's what it looks like. So this is DC showing travel times by census tract for the month of June. And you can look at how long it takes to get to another tract. So this is where the zoo is. So we're going to see how long does it take to get to the zoo for weekdays versus weekends. And it looks like you should go on weekends. So here's a real world example. Um, how many of you guys live in DC and take the metro? Did you take the metro on March 16th? <laughs> I think you did, because it was shut down. Um, there was an electrical fire in one of the tunnels, and they had to shut it down for a day. So we looked at how did that affect travel times on the roads. So it turns out, compared to an average weekday, they were much worse, especially in this one area, sort of from the northeast to the southwest. And the ends of that band roughly coincide with the entry points of several major highways, which is interesting. So you can download the data, yay! CSVs are awesome, you can download them. Um, and this is what it looks like, roughly. It also has the geometry of the boundary aggregation. If you don't know what a TAZ is, you can map it however you want. I love QGIS. OK, so what else? This is what I'm most excited about. What happens to travel times when it rains? Or you add a new bike lane or some other infrastructure in the city? Beyonce concert gets out. It's voting day. Um, maybe it's a natural disaster. You want to see what happened? Or other kinds of disasters? <laughs> maybe fuel prices are, are spiking, or maybe there's amazing spurious correlations out there spatially that we haven't thought about yet, so I'd love to hear more ideas about that. Um, so yeah, so this is movement. It's another way to measure the world around you, and hopefully it can be another tool in your toolkit. Thanks.